Hi everybody, welfare analysis is absolutely massive in economics when it comes to understanding whether resources are being allocated efficiently or not. But to understand welfare, we need to get to terms with consumer surplus and producer surplus. Very important concepts in economics. Let's start with consumer surplus. Here is a definition in green. Consumer surplus is a difference between the price consumers are willing and able to pay for a good or service and the price that they actually pay. Now that's a very important definition for you to know. Uh, also what's very important is how we can find it on a diagram. Now consumer surplus is normally a triangle, not always, but normally a triangle shape like that, found below the demand curve and above the price line. So let's go to a diagram here. I've just drawn a demand curve which really makes it easy to find consumer surplus. Can you see that at price P1 and a quantity of Q1, I've just picked that price here, you can see that there are consumers up here where my finger is. All of these consumers there on the demand curve were willing and able to pay a higher price than P1. By them actually only paying P1, they are getting some surplus, they are getting some welfare. That is consumer surplus. So let's now uh, actually work this out on a diagram using this here. So it's the area above the price line but below the demand curve. So if we call this consumer surplus 1, it's equivalent to the area A, B, P1. Now if we change price, we can also find out what's happened to consumer surplus. Let's raise the price from P1 to P2. Okay, so the price has gone up from P1 to P2 and quantity has decreased from Q1 to Q2 there. What's happened to consumer surplus? Well, clearly you'd expect it to fall because now there are less consumers who are actually gaining some surplus here. Only these consumers are willing and able to pay a higher price than P2 and are thus gaining some surplus here. So it's still exactly the same way to find it out. The area below the demand curve but above the price line. So if I call that C and this consumer surplus 2, we can see now that it's fallen to area AC P2. Whereas if we drop the price to P3, to P3 here, we can see there is more quantity now at Q3. If I call that D here, you can see that consumer surplus has increased compared to uh, the consumer surplus of P1. The consumer surplus has increased clearly, as you'd expect. How do we find it? Exactly the same way, the area beneath the demand curve above the price line gives us an area of ADP3. So that's how we can work out consumer surplus, very simple stuff. What about producer surplus? Producer surplus is defined as this. It's the difference between the price producers are willing and able to supply a good or service for and the price that they actually receive. How do we find producer surplus? Again, it's usually a triangle shaped like that, not always, but usually, found above the supply curve now and below the price line. Okay, very important you remember that. So let's go to this diagram. I've just picked a price P1 with a quantity Q1. And now you can see that at this price of P1, there are all of these suppliers, follow my finger on the supply curve here, all of these suppliers were willing and able to sell their good or service at a lower price than P1 but they're actually selling it for P1, thus they are gaining surplus here. So how do we formalize that on a diagram? Well, we look at this, so it's the area above the supply curve and beneath the price line. That gives us a producer surplus of P1AB. So if I call that producer surplus 1 is equivalent to P1AB. Simple stuff here. And again, if we raise the price and reduce the price using this again, we can work out new producer surplus. So let's raise the price to P2. So let's call that P2 and we have a quantity now of Q2. So if I call that point C there, what's happened to producer surplus? It's increased. The area above the supply curve beneath the price line is now, is now AC P2. So P2 AC. It's increased, hasn't it, producer surplus? Whereas if we drop the price to P3, to P3 here, so let's call that Q3, and let's call that D there. You can see that producer surplus, the new producer surplus, has fallen and it's now equivalent to P3AD. So that's what happens uh, when we increase price and reduce price uh, to, consume, to produce a surplus here. So very, very simple stuff. Following all of that is very important. Now when we draw a market, we can also illustrate the concepts of producer and consumer surplus. Let's do that right now. In an economic market, to work out consumer and producer surplus is so simple, we do it in exactly the same way as we've learned already. So here we have an economic market where demand equals supply, we've got equilibrium. How do we find consumer surplus in the same way as always? The area beneath the demand curve and above the price line. I'm going to shade it in here. So there's our consumer surplus in a market. 
and so consumer surplus. What about producer surplus? Well, remember how we find it? It's the area above the supply curve beneath the price line. That's this triangle here. So the same shape triangles as we're used to. Remember, they don't always have to be triangles like that, but usually they will be. So there's our producer surplus. And the other thing that's really, really useful to know is what we mean by society surplus in economics. This is a term we're going to be using quite a lot um, in the videos later in this playlist that you can see. Society surplus is just the sum of consumer and producer surplus. So just when we add these two together, that is society surplus. So society surplus is just this entire triangle, isn't it? So this triangle here, boom, 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 and all the way up, that's our society surplus because that's a sum of consumer and producer surplus. This is very important when it comes to the allocation of scarce resources here. Okay, so bear that in mind, very useful to know that. But what about when there are shifts? Uh, what happens to consumer and producer surplus? How can we show it there? Well, it's exactly the same as we've done before. So let's look here at a supply shift to the left. We know that there's going to be a new equilibrium with a higher price and a lower quantity there. Fine. But how do we work out, let's say, only consumer surplus on this diagram? Exactly the same way. We want to start with the initial equilibrium at P1 and Q1 here, that price there. Well, consumer surplus is the area beneath the demand curve and above the price line. Let me highlight that in black for you. So it's this triangle here, the same triangle that we're used to seeing. Uh, and let's write it at the top, that consumer surplus 1 is equivalent to the area A, B, P1, simple stuff. But now with a new equilibrium at a higher price, what's happened to consumer surplus? Well, we know that consumer surplus is going to have fallen, but we work it out in exactly the same way. The area beneath the demand curve and above the new price line of P2, that gives us this new black triangle here. And we can say that consumer surplus 2 is the equivalent to the area A, C, P2. It has decreased. So using the same tools that we've already learned on a market where there is a shift, we can still easily work out consumer surplus. Same for producer surplus too. Let's move to this diagram now. We take a demand shift to the right. We want to see what's happened to producer surplus. Well, initially, where was producer surplus? The area above the supply curve, beneath the price line of P1, gives us this black triangle here. Again, the same triangle that we're used to seeing. And that is equivalent to this. So producer surplus 1 is equal to P1 A B. Simple stuff. But now that demand is shifted to the right, we see we've got a new equilibrium at a higher price of P2 and a higher quantity of Q2. So there's this higher price. We want to work out what's happened to produce a surplus. The same area, the area above the supply curve beneath the price line. That's now this black triangle here. So all the way there and all the way up. And that's equivalent to the area P2 C A. Simple, simple stuff. So you can see that a producer surplus is increased when there is a higher price. Exactly what you expect, but you can show it on a diagram like this. Really, really easy stuff. Now remember that the shapes of consumer surplus triangles and producer surplus triangles are normally as we've shown them, but they don't always have to be triangles. Uh, in future videos in this playlist, you'll see that I do a couple of proofs where producer surplus and consumer surplus might actually be trapezium. So just bear that in mind, but that's a rare case. If you generally learn producer surplus as triangles that always look like that, and consumer surplus as triangles that always look like that, you'll easily find them using the tools in this video. So that is consumer surplus and producer surplus completely nailed. You should be masters of this very, very important topic area. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.